Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna take a few minutes here today and show you the solar system, how to go about making a five kilowatt solar system, how we did it, and uh, give you a breakdown of all the different little parts and pieces, where we got them, what they cost, what they cost now, and um, what kind of loads it can support, and show you how you can do this yourself. Uh, you don't have to do it this big, you can do it much smaller, or you can go much larger. We've got actually a moderately small system for kind of a smaller off-grid home, it's real efficient. Uh, we got LED everything, no appliances. So without further ado, let me show you this. So I got up on the roof to show you this for scale. Not that I'm huge, I'm about five, six, but we got two banks of panels, one on the left here, one on the right. And eight panels per bank, and they're 270 watt panels each. Uh, they push anywhere from, uh, they're rated for I think 10, but they can push like 12 and a half amps each. So we can get up here, hit them with the hose, clean them off. They're at a good angle. They're at like 38 degrees, which is perfect for our area. These are the panels we used here. They're called Renogies. We bought ours off Walmart. I think we paid about 250 a piece. I think you can get them on Amazon as well. Uh, you can pause the screen up here and look at the, uh, the numbers and all that. All right, let me show you what we got over here. This is the main brain of the whole electrical system. So inside here is our battery box. We've got 16 six volt golf cart batteries is what they are. They're real true deep cycles. And we'll talk more about those in a minute here. Let me just kind of give you a general overview of what we got. So power comes in through this conduit and it comes in through two sets of breaker boxes. You got eight panels over here and two sets of four. So that way if something goes wrong and panel set goes down, I can still shut off some, but still make power with three quarters of the rest of them. Um, once it comes out of those panels, it feeds down separately into two charge controllers. Now, charge controllers take your power and they make sure it's at the right voltage for the battery bank you're using, and they maximize the amount of light you're getting into electricity. Um, they also protect everything. And over here, the power gets fed into this distribution panel. It's got a controller on it and this takes the power and it sends it out to the places it needs to go mainly up to this which is our inverter charger. Now this is a really nice heavy duty one. So this inverter is really it's pretty badass. It's a real good standalone unit for off-grid applications. Way over engineered. The dang thing weighs 80 pounds. And funny enough, look what they wrote inside of this thing. And this takes the power from DC and kicks it out to AC up at the house. It also conversely, when we turn the generator on, the AC coming in from the generator outside. Got a generator right there. That kicks AC power. So when the generator kicks the AC power in and the inverter and that charges the batteries whenever the generator goes on while also powering the house. So let me show you the batteries a little bit here. We've got six volt batteries and these are 232 amp hours. So we could run 232 amps for one hour essentially, but that's not exactly how it works. Um, you got four batteries in a string here which creates six, 12, 18, 24 volts. And then you've got four banks of that that are all parallel tied together. So it's a 24 volt system with four banks of 232 amp hour batteries. So these here are the batteries that we bought. Um, again, they're six volt golf cart batteries. They're a true deep cycle and you can Pause back up to look at the specs here on these. They're pretty solid batteries. Uh, we're running four in a string to get 24 volts. And we've got four strings in parallel, giving us a total of 16 batteries. 
to be charged by 16 panels. As charge controllers go, it doesn't get any bigger than this that I'm aware of until you get into like industrial use. I mean, 100 amp is pretty big. All right, these here are the specs on the uh, Rover 100 amp charge controllers. They're, uh, they're also Renogy. They're really nice. They parallel together. You can string two in a row and um, get 200 amps in total. I uh, got the complete description for you and the specifications. You can again, pause up, read these. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little demonstration here and you're gonna see, I'm gonna kick on the water. That's a 60 amp load. We'll watch the power kick up to compensate. Okay, here we go. We got a 60 amp load popping up all of a sudden. And this inverter jumps to 19 amps. 500 watts, this one went up to 24. This here will kick off in a moment. And when that load comes off, the power that the solar panels are generating will kick right on back down. All right, so power kicked off. You'll see that's going right on back down. And that one's right back down to 40 watts there. 120 watts here. All right, so this is the on-demand water heater, and it's propane. And you get three controls. You got a winter slash summer control. This is the water flow control. And this is the temp control. Real chill. It all runs off propane. Just a quick little line in and a little connection to your water. I'll show you here. <clears throat> we flick out this hot water. And it is battery operated. No electricity needed. It takes two D batteries. I don't think this thing was 300 bucks online. Amazon. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little something here today. Not only how to set up a solar system, the different parts you're going to need, where to get them, and the rough cost on them. Without further ado, see you next time.